Welcome back to the Warts and All podcast. I'm Susie Edge, medical doctor and historian, and I'm just fascinated by how we've treated the human body in life and in death, but let's face it, mostly in death. Should we call this season two? I'm not sure. Firstly, what's been going on? Well, I'm writing Mortal Monarchs, the book. It's coming along really well. I'm not going to lie, it's really hard, but hey, that's what makes it fun. Uh, That challenge is great fun, and I'm enjoying it immensely. I'm really excited about the cover reveal that's going to happen very soon. Uh, I love the cover, it's great. It's, um, yeah, well, let's just wait and see, shall we? You can pre order Mortal Monarchs, the book, at Amazon, Waterstones. If you're in America or Canada, you can pre order a signed first edition from our friends at Goldsboro Books. Love them, so thank you to them for doing that. I'm going to have to go on a trip down to London with my Sharpies at the ready and, uh, and sign some of those later in the year. Links are on my website at susieedge.com or in the about section of the podcast, however you're listening. Thanks for, thanks for all the people who've been asking about that. As ever, I'm so grateful to those who are supporting my writing and creative endeavours at patreon.com. Thanks to Lucinda Porter and Chase Gardieppi, I hope I said your name right, and uh, Kurt Williams. You guys have sent me really lovely, supportive messages. Do you know what brings a tear to my eye? Because, I mean, I'm just British and it's awkward, (laughs) but I do feel really, really grateful and... um, Thank you for that. I've been sending out some t-shirts, although I have to say I've had a massive fight with my merch provider. It's just just, just tricky. You'd think... Anyway, enough of that. Uh, if you're waiting on something, then please keep an eye on the post. I am up to date, so it's just a question of delivery. And uh, let me know if you're expecting something and it doesn't come through. So, what else? Continued wonderful support on TikTok. Um, we've got... I 205 I think thousand followers which just blows me away every one of you I just I appreciate it so much when I I see a little notification to say that someone's followed I think wow (laughs) that's amazing so thank you onwards what's going on this week on TikTok well well we'll talk about that at the end let's move on to the podcast this week's podcast there's a lot of content out there about the Titanic disaster. It's been over a hundred years since it happened, and yet it still captures our imagination. My children were learning about it in projects at school. We just, we do see it everywhere. It's such a wonderful story, but there's more to it for me than the bits that we hear about the survivors or the the plates that you see on the ocean bed. There's more to it. And the same thing with the white ship disaster. And whenever I hear these stories, I wonder, how did the cold northern water affect their bodies? So let's find out. This is Warts and All, episode 11. You're not dead until you're warm and dead. In 1120, the white ship sank off the French coast. The heir to the throne, son of Henry I, was lost in the freezing waters. And with him, many English nobles lost their lives too. The sinking of the white ship had a huge impact on England in the years to follow. There were years of strife. Thank you to my friend who sent me Charles Spencer's book, The White Ship. I love it. I know that um, my friend Dan was reading it last year and and definitely recommended it. And I've, I've got it now. So wonderful. In April of 1912, the Titanic sank on its maiden voyage to America, hit an iceberg. 1,500 people died in the icy waters. That's a story that we're all really familiar with, but of course there are so many. One terrible day in 1832, 105 fishermen from Shetland were lost at sea in one storm. 105 people went into the water, leaving behind wives and children with nothing. Of course, these are just three stories of lives lost in frozen northern waters. There are so many of them. I mean, you're probably familiar with the Titanic, but maybe not so much the white ship. So let's just go there for a moment. It was a freezing cold but calm night in November 1120. Henry I, his family and 250 nobles were due to travel across the Channel to England. A man called Henry Fitzstephen stepped forward. He claimed that his father's ship years before had been used to convey Henry's father, Duke William of Normandy, across to England during the time of the conquest. He asked, could he do the same for the conqueror's son? Now, Henry already had plans. He didn't want to deviate from them. But sure, if they wanted, his son and the others, they could travel with Fitzstephen. Everyone was in a mood for a party, and the wine started to flow. 
Very soon, passengers and crew alike were under the influence. They were singing songs and dancing, making TikTok videos. Orders were given that the ship be sailed as fast as possible. Let's race Dad and get to England before him. Wouldn't that be fun? But just out of the harbour, the racing ship struck a rock and capsized. All but one of the souls on board the white ship died in the freezing waters. And what interests me about these stories is that whatever the reason for the sinkings, however many years separate the stories, what happened to the people would have been the same. Their bodies were challenged by the cold and the water. Their bodies would have mounted the same physiological responses and they would have had the same outcomes. So my question is, what happened to the people who fell in the frozen water? The ones who didn't survive, the ones who didn't make it home? Well, the body needs to be at an optimal temperature, or thereabouts, for the biochemical functions that are going on. Sitting on board ship before disaster struck, the passengers' core temperatures were being maintained at about 37 degrees. They were, I don't know, dancing below decks on the Titanic, knocking back wine on the white ship. Maybe they were sitting, sipping sherry elegantly in first class. But when disaster struck, the freezing water began to steal the heat away. When the temperature isn't right, proteins will start to change their shape, meaning interactions are no longer meaningful and function is lost, because it's the shape of the proteins and how they all react in the body that lead to the biochemical functions that keep us going. When the temperature of the body starts to fall, the body realises and changes start to happen automatically to try and compensate to keep that optimal temperature maintained where it's needed. But before all that happens... There's the cold shock response. Many on these ships were thrown into the waters, and falling into the water would be followed by an involuntary gasp, of massive breathing in. It's mediated by receptors in the skin, cold skin receptors, that realises that you have hit a dangerous situation. <gasps> Big drawing in of breath could be an immediate problem, though, because if you're under the water, that would be a sharp intake of, well water into your lungs. A life jacket could keep you from being under the water when that involuntary gasp happens. So a cold shock response can lead to immediate drowning. But if you can keep water out of the lungs at this point, then it's the cold we need to worry about. You've got about 10 minutes to change things. In about 10 minutes, muscle cramps will prevent you from moving to help yourself to get aboard a nearby lifeboat, or to climb aboard a huge wooden door that your new girlfriend is hogging. We don't forgive you, Rose de Whitbicator. Hypothermia will occur progressively over the next hour. Firstly, blood will be shunted from the peripheries where they're not necessary for survival. Your feet might not need the blood that could be keeping important organs warm. This happens by a constriction of the peripheral blood vessels, squeezing the blood towards the core. They'll be shivering, where muscles move involuntarily, trying to generate heat. Teeth will chatter. With ten minutes in freezing water with a life jacket, you can do something about it. But beyond that, we're in trouble. Also, the freezing water around the ears can bring on vertigo and disorientation. Not knowing which way is up would be a terrible scenario. And it would be worsened by the partying passengers, especially on the white ship, the ones who'd been at the wine. As the freezing water starts to steal your remaining heat away, the body temperature, the core temperature, drops further. Once below 28 degrees, so between 24 and 28 degrees, you can expect unconsciousness. There's no more shivering. You could still feel a pulse. If you fished them out the water at that point and their airway had remained open, they could still have vital signs. And if you find somebody cold unconscious but they still have vital signs then they're unlikely to be at less than 24 degrees. Below 24 degrees though you can expect a cardiac arrest. Heat production is overcome by the excessive cold, energy stores are depleted. As for the heart rhythm as it gets colder there's a decreased depolarization of cardiac pacemaker cells. The beat will slow and will progress from a sinus bradycardia through atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation and eventually asystole. It'd take more than a cup of cocoa to get things working again at this point. The central nervous system metabolism decreases. There's a linear relationship between the Glasgow Coma Scale and core temperature. 
and confusion and hallucinations can lead to bad decision making, making everything worse. And as freezing water expands in the extremities, cells damaged by water freezing leak out their contents. The potassium levels will be seen to rise in hypothermic patients. It's, it's a level used to decide what treatment, if any, they're going to need. Of the 340 bodies recovered from the Atlantic after the Titanic sinking, many of the bodies were considered too disfigured to be identified. Ask a mortician told us about this. It's great. Go check her out. When it's freezing cold and people are talking about ending up in the frozen waters, people say you won't last long. And many survivors of being cold but not dead say that it was very peaceful, that they didn't really feel anything. Well, that's because the body's shutting down. Reading this is making me feel cold. I'm even shivering a little in my old cottage in Scotland, it being winter and all. I'm off to light the fire. I would talk about intentional hypothermia and its therapeutic uses. After all, I jump into a freezing cold shower every morning. OK, I don't jump, I step gingerly. But this chat, well, we should keep it for those lost at sea that made me think about making this podcast. I mean, I imagine the scenario to be utter panic. Initially, both inside and out, the body's desperately trying to, to seek a way out of this problem. And it's not long before things start to shut down. And it's a progression from things starting to shut down slowly to unable to function altogether. There's a saying in medicine and mountaineering that you're not dead until you're warm and dead. And the reason for that is that people have been resuscitated from incredible situations. If you're frozen quickly, then you could be brought out of it. A flash freezing is easier to recover from than long, slow, progressive hypothermia. I mean, I say that relatively, of course. There are some great stories out there of people surviving incredible hypothermic situations. And if you're into that sort of thing, definitely worth looking up. But of course, we're not talking about in the middle of the Atlantic a hundred years ago, and we're certainly not talking about in the English Channel nine hundred years ago. These people just really had no chance once they were in the water. Thanks for listening to the Warts and All podcast. That's been episode 11. You're not dead until you're warm and dead. I think I just love stories of the human body throughout history. Our attitudes, how we've treated the body in life and in death might have changed. But the body itself, over the last thousand years, well, it would have had the same response to being thrown into frozen water. Now, I promised a rundown of what's been going on on TikTok. This week, well, it's all been about Richard III and the Wars of the Roses. Well, actually, no, it's been about Edward V, Richard III's nephew. See, there was this story that was really popular over the last couple of weeks. It was about the idea that Edward V, the nephew, one of the princes in the tower, managed to escape and he lived out his life you know without going back to get the throne or anything he lived out his life in devon well i can think of worse places to go and live and there's this church in devon which has lots of yorkist things about it <laughs> i should i should have written this down before i started talking because i start using words like stuff and things uh, when i don't pre-write something but there's there are all these clues apparently, and this is uh, this is Philippa Langley. This is the woman who found Richard the Third in the car park in Leicester. So you know, we're not going to dismiss what she's saying. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, this is very much um, Dan Brown sort of novel idea," but you know, it's all good fun, and it makes people interested in in looking back at these things, which which is great. We've looked at the beheading of Alice Lyle. We've looked at, we've looked at the death of the White Queen, possibly of plague, and also the Kingmaker Richard Neville, the one who didn't want her as queen and rebelled against the crown because of it. We've had some career chat as well. I like to answer questions about that. Uh, what else? I tell you what, I'm going to whip out my phone, open TikTok. Oh, hang on, and see what else we've been talking about. <laughs> so, I've got an Instagram follower who. Um, <laughs> Who got this, you know, one of these messages on Instagram saying, if you follow Susie Edge, you might like Brittany Spears. And that was just the funniest thing that absolutely made my day. Silly things like that do make me laugh. Anyway, we talked about having Scottish ancestors, the Highland clearances, what happened to Simon de Montfort, 
And also there's the series I've been doing on old medical terms, the sort of words that you might see on old death certificates and uh, mortality lists. If you're doing your family history, that sort of thing. I'm going to turn that one into a YouTube video. And as for YouTube, yep, I'm going to pick that up and run with it in the coming uh, in the coming wee while. I've had a bit of a... Sh <laughs> I've had a bit of a slow start to the new year because of a certain bug that shall not be named. And um, so I've been put back a little bit. But we have great plans, plans for YouTube. So go on over there and subscribe. And the first video on there is going to be about unicorn horns. Yes, it's history and it's history of the human body. You'll see there is a connection, honestly. <laughs> That's us for now. Thanks for listening. See you over on TikTok or Patreon or YouTube or wherever else you, uh, you hang out. See you there.